Hello everybody. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd have a look at um, an old mobile phone catalogue from 1995 or possibly 96. I'm not entirely sure, but it's about 21 years ago. What we have is the What Mobile Guide to Buying a Mobile Phone in association with Currys. What Mobile was a mobile phone review magazine, still going strong today, I believe. And Currys is a big UK and Ireland electrical retailer, be a bit like a Best Buy in the States. Um, I never really was a big fan of theirs because they're obsessed with hard sell. And I kind of wondered, did they make more money selling guarantees and extended warranties than they did from actually selling the goods? I kind of wonder because uh, I used to dread going in there because if I wanted to buy something, you'd have to go run the gauntlet of trying to say no, 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 whenever they tried to sell you the guarantee at the counter. But anyway, so yeah, so they call it the What Mobile Guide to Boeing and Mobile Phone. In reality, it's just the Curry's Mobile Phone Catalogue. Um... So yeah, I've had this for 20 odd years, sitting in my pile of books and magazines that I collect, so let's have a nosy through it. So uh, a couple of lots the, the manufacturers that are on sale, um, Ericsson, Sony, NEC, well Sony's still going, but NEC isn't, well, they're going as, as a company, but they don't make phones anymore as far as I know, or they don't sell them in Europe. Panasonic, Motorola, which appears to be um, kind of vanishing, I know they were taken over by Lenovo, but... You don't really see them around very often nowadays, and um, yeah, let's have a nosy inside. Consider this. That guy looks far too happy to be doing this. Um, I find it interesting here is, is will it send SMS as well as receive? Because back in the day, and for in the early days of digital phones, they could only receive SMSs, they couldn't actually send. Because I believe um, SMS was kind of like an accident, it wasn't... It was something that was created by network engineers to send messages and test data, and it was one of those things that somehow ended up in the actual consumer spec, and people actually started using it. Because, um, like, a few years after this, this is, SMS became, like, the huge, and it was the preferred method of you know, contacting people on a mobile phone. And uh, uh, there's talk of, like, about uh, payments and all, and... Oh, this is an interesting one. What type, of, what type of batteries are available? Lithium-ion is better than nickel-metal hydride, and nickel-metal hydride is better than NICAD. Yep, they had NICAD batteries back in phones back then. Big, chunky, nasty batteries. The most advanced way to communicate has arrived, the GH388. I actually had one of those phones. Um, nice phone. Uh, tiny display. But really well made. Um, so there we go. One, two, one. Actually, before I go on, let me talk a bit about the, the how mobile phones in the UK worked, when, how the, the business of mobile phones worked back then. Cellnet and Vodafone were the first two networks. And they came out in 1985 with an analogue service called ETAX, uh, Extended Total Access Communication System. Um, and until 1993, they were the only two players. And... and 1983, 121 came along, Mercury 121, and so did Orange. So that was competition. But before, prior to that, if you wanted a mobile phone, you couldn't actually buy it direct from Vodafone or Cellnet, or buy the airtime direct from Vodafone or Cellnet. You had to go for an independent airtime provider who would buy airtime in wholesale, bulk, in wholesale chunks and sell it on to you. So although you would be on the Cellnet or the Vodafone network, your contract would be with a company such as People's Phone or Cellular One or uh, Talkland or one of those sort of companies. So, um, and the it meant basically that there was comp artificial competition had been created. So, um, and Vodafone and Cellnet did have their own airtime providers. Uh, Vodafone's was called Vodak and Cellnet's was called Call Connections, who, who was the company you would deal with if you were buying from Curry's. But they had to be, you know, these companies had to be kept at arm's length and they weren't allowed to be given preferential treatment over other airtime providers. When Mercury 121 and Orange came along, they were allowed to start selling directly. And one of the first things they did was they actually started, Vodafone and Cellnet started buying up all the airtime providers that were in existence. So if you remember the 90s and you were living in the UK and all the, when all the shops, that's all the independent mobile shops started getting replaced by um, Vodafone and Cellnet shops, that's why. Uh, Vodafone bought People's Phone, and um, I think Cellnet bought Talkland and a few others. Anyway, let's go into the details here. <clears throat> Motorola M301. Uh, 
basic, it looks like a flip phone, but that's just decorative that there. Uh, talk time, battery life, 70 minutes talk time, 12 hours in standby, 99 memories. Wow, 24 digits backlit display. <laughs> and uh, battery level on screen, but not permanently. Uh, one, one touch voicemail button, large SIM, yes. Back in the day, uh, instead of a SIM card being the size of a stamp, they were actually credit card sized and you would put them under the battery or have a slot to slide them in. The Motorola Flare, which was kind of a Vodafone, so um, Motorola's basic GSM phone back then, uh, 60 minutes talk time, 12 hours in standby, so that's not even half a day. Terrible, really. Uh, Motorola personality, the easy to use memory menu system. I remember that it wasn't really all. They made a big deal of it, but I couldn't quite figure out what the big what, the, what was so special about it. And uh, notice they're giving these ratings: uh, three out of ten, seven out of ten, eight out of ten. <coughs> Sorry about that, my dog. So Ericsson PH337, which is actually the same as the GH388. Advertised back here. The difference is because a one two one operated on uh, eighteen hundred megahertz, so one point eight megahertz frequency, and Vodafone and Cellnet operated on nine hundred megahertz. There was a slightly different antenna, so that's a lot of these phones are available on the other networks. Essentially the same phone, but with differences to account for. Uh, different frequency bands and the like, but most, but other than that, they're pretty much the same phone. Uh, the Nokia twenty one forty six, uh, nice little phone. I uh, never used it, but I know people who had it, and they said it was a pretty decent phone for the money. You can see. Another thing you notice: there's only four phones available on Mercury one two one. It was a different world back then. We simply listened to what you want, Nokia. Yeah, they didn't listen when people said they should have went with Android instead of Windows. Um. Oh yeah. So one thing I didn't look at was uh call charges. Like one to one selling point was free local calls at the weekend. Um, so he had a connection fee back then, thirty four ninety nine. It wouldn't happen these days. And a monthly subscription range from twenty three fifty up to forty one fifteen. Thirteen, sorry. And call charges ranging from eleven point seven five p peak to six p off peak. Probably one of the cheap, the ch one of the cheapest providers back at the time. But um, still compared to today, where you know, you'll get hundreds of voice minutes included for nothing it's it was a different time orange yes they were the first their selling point at the time was that they included talk time in their subscription which uh i always wondered if it was actually cheaper to do it that way or not because in the, the day we're still paying for the minutes and their connection was 35 25 with subscriptions going from 1763 up to 117 so you went from 15 minutes included up to 540 minutes included um <clears throat> And peak call charge is going from 30p a minute peak to 8p off peak. No. Because you notice here also they don't operate in Northern Ireland. And neither did uh, one to one So I had limited choice because I, I was in Northern Ireland at the time. So what have they got? The MR20, which is basically the Motorola Flare. The Nokia Orange, which is the sort of mid-range orange uh, Nokia phone. The Nokia 5.1, which is basically the Nokia 2110, but the orange version. And I always find the 5.1 branding odd, because to me that was associated with uh, Dolby Surround but, uh, and Surround Sound Systems, but there you go. And the Ericsson ER100s, which um, again, you see, notice the longer antenna to account for the different frequencies they operated on. And uh, 80 minutes talk time, 22 hours standby, 9 out of 10. And this also worked with the, this phone, the 2110 and the 5.1, you could plug a, a modem in. And get up to 9,600 bits per second. Wow. And uh, oh, another thing Orange had that the other networks did was um, they also allowed you to have two numbers on one phone. That was one of, one of their unique features. But I don't know many people who ever used it. So, Cellnet. Now, this is Cellnet Analog, which was still going. Cellnet Analog operated until 2000, I believe. And Vodafone's Analog service went on, continued until 2001. Uh... Uh, a low cost option, but then what you were getting was no security. Anyone could listen into your calls. Um, better coverage though. You know, one of the things with digital mobile phone networks is that you get less 
less geographic coverage for the same number of cell stations. But, uh, you know, it's that's part of progress, isn't it? And also, they build in 30-second intervals, which I always find very strange. So if you, say, made a 1 minute 31 second call, you'd be billed for 2 minutes. I always considered that a bit unfair, but that's the way it was. So there are two tariffs, Freedom and Occasional Caller. No connection charge, no subscription for Freedom, but Occasional Caller, 14 99 But Freedom tariff, 48 pence a minute peak, 19p off peak, 50 pin and for Occasional Caller, 50p peak and 20p off peak. So when you think about it, you're paying roughly 20 pence, or well, between the two, to call off peak at the time when a landline call was one pence a minute off peak. So it's a you're paying you're paying big money for it, and of course you can say you no. Know, whereas our uh, a few more phones to select from. What sort of battery life we're we getting here? Seventy minutes talk time, sixteen hours in standby, twenty three hours standby, twenty hours, eighteen. 12 memories in the Sony. You can store 12 numbers. Uh, 99 memories. 98. And this is uh, numbers only as well on this, uh, this Sony. That's crazy, isn't it? Um, although there was 99 memories in this Sony. Yeah, it's a completely different world, wasn't it? And uh, Cellnet Digital, there we go. Tariffs, 3550 connection, uh, subscription 1799 for regular caller plus and frequent caller plus 2950, and between 35p a peak and 12p off peak. <clears throat> Owning a phone back then was an expensive thing, and um, like okay, big benefits of GSM at the time, digital, you could use it abroad, calls were encrypted, and you got per second billing, but the coverage was was not as great. <clears throat> There's a lot more to choose from, as you can see. There's uh, 12, no, 12 phones on sale. The Nokia 1610, great phone for the day. For the day, it was its selling point was, although it was big, it had amazing battery life, and it had 200 um, minutes talk time, 100 hours standby, so four days. There's phones on sale today would get nowhere near that. Well, my Huawei P9, I'm lucky if I get a day and a half standby out of that, but as, as soon as I use it. I'm not, I'm not even going to get a full day's use out of it. The Motorola 8400 um, is the, virtually identical to the 7500, except that the 7500 could only receive SMSs. It couldn't send. Um, Philips Fizz, cheap and nasty phone. It was always given away for free. Well, there was nothing horrendously wrong with it, but I think it was build quality was a bit iffy. And there we go, the Nokia 8110. That was the phone they used in the Matrix. Everyone assumed it was the 7110. No, but it was the 8110. When Neo got the phone delivered him and he's like, well, I don't want this phone. What am I going to do with this? But well, a fair basic phone. Panasonic's never really had much experience with those. And the Nokia 2110, they're sort of like the top of the line phone, the Apple iPhone 10 of the day. A very nice phone. Uh, four line display. You plug a modem into it. Not great battery life. 70 minutes talk time, 20 hours in standby. That's pretty poor when you think about it. Um, and there's the GH, the GH388. Well, that had 80 hours in standby, so that's that's even better than the um, the Nokia. But I don't actually remember ever getting that much out of mine. Maybe it was just I was unlucky. Now we go into the accessories, lever cases. You don't see them anymore, do you? And uh, trying to flog accessories. And there we go. So yeah, like one of the things um, that uh, I, I noticed about all this and looking through it is just there isn't actually a huge amount of difference between the phones really when you think about it. Like nowadays when you buy a phone, you know, you're looking for you know, things like screen resolution, memory, uh, does it have the latest 4G standard, does it... Um, have a retina display and all sorts of weird does it have an sd card slot does it have gps back then like what the differences between the phones are more like some phones are slightly bigger than others some have better battery life um some look a bit more stylish but there wasn't really a huge amount of variation like if you take for example the motorola flare which was 
Motorola's basic GSM phone. It, no, to be honest with you, it didn't really have a huge amount. To, no difference between that and say the Nokia twenty one ten. Okay, that was the business phone, but look, two hundred memories. Whereas this had a hundred memories. Okay, you're paying like that. Their phone was two hundred pounds on contract, whereas that would have been given away for free on contract, and it was a twelve month contract back then. So that would be the cheapest. That would be the most expensive. But the variation between the two just isn't. There isn't a huge amount really when you think about it. That phone would have done you just as well as that phone. Although I suspect, you no know, mid nineties there was still an element of yuppiness going around, and there was a certain uh, cachet having this. But uh, oh, this also had a choice of ringtones, which was like, a, yeah, that's what you could choose between eight tinkly, twinkly sounding ringtones. But um, yeah, so it's a different world, really, isn't it? Like. Nowadays you've got so much choice and so much variation and there's like dozens of manufacturers to choose from and then there's, if you want to sort of start investigating what's available in other countries, you find there's other manufacturers available. Back then there was seven or eight manufacturers and there wasn't really a huge amount of difference between the phones. Um, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye.